Hello friends, in previous classes, we studied about Schrodinger's wave equation, both time dependent and of course time independent. But they were just the mathematical illustrations and mathematical formulas. And now we'll be using those mathematical formulas to prove them in a given practical problem. So let's begin. <music> To begin, first, it is the most important question asked during your final exams. So the derivation again itself is very important. Again, this would be the most easiest derivation which you ever found in your uh, reference books. So do follow the same and step by step to get good marks. So let's begin with the derivation. Here, as you can see, there's a particle, right? This is the red particle that you can see. I have created an artificial well now what is this well well this is nothing but as a potential barrier now what is a potential barrier well the potential barrier is something this is zero where the particle starts and this would be the length l where the particle can maximum go in one dimension well you have to assume that this particle is only moving in single x axis well the derivation remains same for y and as well for z so we'll be taking only one consideration axis into picture this is a space where your v is equal to zero when your v is equals to zero there is a high probability of the particle being found in the length between zero to l so here, your psi is not equal to zero. Now what is psi? Psi is nothing but as Schrodinger's wave function, which basically deals with the probability of finding a particle within the space. Well, if the potential is zero, of course there's a great probability that the particle is found in between the region. And hence your psi is not equal to zero in the region. Now, for the region on the outer side, your potential is infinite. Well, if your potential is infinite, of course, it does mean that your particle cannot be found here. So, of course, needless to say, your psi would be zero. Now, this is applicable also for the wall, wherein the potential for the walls as well as the psi is zero for the walls as well. Got it? So, this is how we'll be beginning with the derivation. As you can see, your particle is entitled to oscillate between the length 0 to L on the x-axis. So at the max, particle can go at this wall and of course rebound to the given wall again. But there are certain points that you need to remember. This could be the points of viva. So the first is the collision is perfectly elastic. Now what do you mean by a perfectly elastic collision? Well, if this is the wall, and you throw a ball at this wall and it has an energy of 10 units, the ball rebounds again with the same amount of energy. So a perfectly elastic collision is the collision in which there is no loss of kinetic energy. So the electron will not come to a distance which is less than what it has started with. So it will always cover the same distance which it had started before the collision because there is no loss of energy. So that's an important question for Viva that could be asked for the exam. Now, let's begin with the Schrodinger's equation. This is Schrodinger's time independent wave equation. Now, we know that the potential is zero if your length is between zero to L. Or let's say, suppose, when the position of the particle is between zero and L and it is infinite otherwise. Do remember there is just less than sign on both the sides. It's not less than equal to. Well, if you write 0 less than equal to x less than equal to L, it would go wrong because potential on the walls or the boundary condition is 0 as well. So make a note, you should not write less than equal to. Now, we know the given fact that potential is infinite outside the well. So if the potential is infinite, of course my size is zero. So I'll be using my u as infinity. So if my u is infinity and this equation holds true, it can hold true only if my psi is 
zero. If my psi is zero, then only the above equation will hold true. Well, if psi is zero, which is the result of putting v as infinity in this equation, what does it mean? It means the particle is not outside the boundary or the particle is within the boundary. Particle is not outside or it is within the boundary. Now, inside the well, we know that potential is zero. Substituting the same view with the value of u is equal to zero in the equation, we get del square psi upon dx square plus 8 pi square m upon h square times e minus zero is equal to zero. Resubstituting the value of this, we get an equation which is something like this. Let's consider this part to be as k square. Now why? Just for simplification because it becomes easier for us to have a single variable instead of 8 pi square m upon h square times z. Now del square psi upon dx square plus k square e psi is equal to 0. Instead of the whole big term I have written only k square. Now if you see this is the second order derivative and solution to a second order derivative is always of the form of a sin kx plus b cos kx. Well if you don't know this is something which you need to remember. Always a second order derivative has a function which is a sum of cosine as well as sine. So considering the equations we know that when x is equal to 0 or at the boundary my psi of x is equal to 0 because yes it is true at the boundary there would be zero probability of finding the particle. So plugging the equations we get the value 0 equals to a sin 0 plus b cos 0 therefore 0 equals to 0 plus b because we know that cos 0 is 1 whereas sin 0 is 0. So you get the value of b as 0. So in the equation this term stands off. Why? Because the coefficient b is 0. Taking the second consideration, when x is equals to l, well this is on the another side, of course your psi is equal to 0 because be it this wall or be it this wall, there is no probability of finding the electron or the particle beyond. So your when x is equals to l, psi of l equals to 0. Plugging the same values in the above equation, we get 0 is equals to a sin kl plus 0. Here we have we are not using cos because it is already standard out. So the equation becomes a sin kl equals to 0 or kl becomes equals to n pi because we know that sin at n pi is equal to 0. So standard k equals to n pi by l. But we know that k square is nothing but as 8 pi square m e upon h square. Well, if k square is equals to 8 pi square m e upon h square, I can say that n pi by l the whole square is equals to 8 pi square m e upon h square. We get the energy equation as this. Energy is equals to n square h square upon 8 m l square. This is the energy of the particle inside the well. Now, now you can clearly see that the general equation for the energy is given as n square h square upon 8 ml square. Another question for Viva, how are energy distributed? Well, you can clearly see that your energy is a function of n square or basically you can say that your energy is quantized. Now, what do you mean by energy is quantized? Well, if you consider h square h square upon 8 m l square let it be called as beta so your e1 will be equal to beta e2 would be equal to 2 square beta which would be 4 beta now this is what quantization means first energy you have as beta and second energy you have as 4 beta there would be no intermediates 
और बेसिकली यू कैन से योर एनर्जी इज ऑलवेज अवेलेबल इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्वान्टाइज पैकेट अंपल फॉर्म ऑफ क्वान्टाइजेशन दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन फॉर वाइवा प्लीज मेक अ नोट Examiner is going to ask you what is quantization and give a practical example of quantization. Well, a practical example for quantization would be um, any product that is available in a specific quantity. You'll get either in terms of multiple of one or four or eight or hence on. You won't be getting a multiple of three and multiple of three point four or multiple of two point seven. This is quantization. Quantization is nothing but as clubbing same thing together, but with an integer, which is in this case proportional as n square. So your e one is nothing but as h square upon eight ml square. E two is nothing but as four times e one. E three is nothing but as nine times e one, and e four is sixteen times of e one. So here you can see it is four times. Nine times and sixteen times. So this means that your energy levels are always quantized. They would be available in the form of x, four x, nine x, sixteen x, so on and so forth. The next would of course be e five, which then would be equal to twenty five h square upon eight m l square. This is called as quantization, and hence. Energy is quantized. Now, now psi of x is nothing but as a sine n pi l by x. This is the generalized equation. Now we are not taking again b because it has been already ruled out because capital B equals to zero. That was the coefficient for cosine. Now this is something which you need to know. If my particle is given that it is within the boundary conditions, then the probability of finding the particle within this boundary is of course going to be equal to one. Or, in a better way, if I add the probabilities of finding the particle anywhere from zero to l, I'll be getting some as one. So, if I integrate this function from zero to l for psi of x, the whole square, it is going to be equal to one. Now, this is a very important step and critical to know. This is the probability distribution function, and integral of probability distribution function always equals to one. So, what does the probability distribution function actually means? It means that if you add the probabilities. Of finding the particle from anywhere between zero to l, you are going to get one. It basically means, in general sense, that there is a probability of one in finding a particle between zero to l, or you can say, in other words, there is hundred percent chance that your particle is going to be between zero and l. And to prove that mathematically, we use the integration function. So, integrating the whole function of x from zero to l, we get value as One. Well, this is an integration that you need to solve. This takes a form of sine square n pi l x. I hope you all know that you cannot solve the squared function integration directly. You need to convert it into a half angle form and then convert it. On solving, after you solve this, you will get the value of a as root of two by L. This is the value that you need to plug in again in this equation to get the equation of psi of x. So your psi x becomes equals to under root of 2l times sine of pi x by this. Now you get the value of a as under root of 2 by l. You need to plug in this value into the equation of psi. To get the final value, which becomes like this. So psi of x equals to under root of 2 by l. Times sine pi n upon l times x. This is the function for wave. This is the final step of the derivation. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ekeda and subscribe to Ekeda.